So uh, we're going to take a look at the new simulation feature, which is part of Atomic Automation Intelligence. And um, this is a feature which will allow you to simulate changes that you plan on making to your production uh, jobs prior to moving them into production. Um, it's particularly useful to see if any of the changes that you're planning will affect any SLAs that you have in place. So uh, as an example, let's take a look at this market pricing application, which is currently running in production. Um, this is an Autosys job stream, and um, there's an SLA on this market price 003 job. And in fact, um, this market pricing application is an infraday application. It runs every 30 minutes. And you can see in this drop down that there's a run for it um, all, all during the day at every 30 minute interval. And uh, typically it starts on the half hour and the hour, and it runs for about 35 minutes or so. And you can see here that this is the SLA, this red dashed line over on the right is the SLA. So on average, um, it, it does not currently breach its S SLA. Uh, within this job stream, there are uh, a couple of boxes. So this, so this market price in New York uh, box is an autosys box that within it has uh, another box called market price Chicago which has a few jobs inside of it so the plan is um, the the proposed changes to production are to add another box within market price New York to do additional processing which will run at the same time as the market price Chicago box and um, will be required for the market price Los Angeles to complete in order for this successor job to run as well. So what we want to do is simulate those proposed changes without actually making the changes in the scheduler and see if the changes that we're proposing would have any effect on the SLA. So to do that, we can go over to the, uh, the web user interface, which I will bring up now. And um, we want to we want to navigate uh, from the context menu to the simulation context, which is what we're currently looking at. And we, let's say we want to run a new simulation. So when we run a new simulation, the first thing we want to do is select what time we want to simulate. So I'm going to, uh, for purposes of this demonstration, select tomorrow. So today is April 6th. I'm going to select April 7th at around the same time of day. Now remember this job stream is running every 30 minutes. So we're going to start uh, we're going to start it tomorrow at about the same time of day. Then you have a uh, an edit field here where you can type in the jill that you are planning to the job definitions that you're planning on simulating or what would be easier would be to load those in from a file. So I'm going to choose to append these jill contents from a file. And I happen to have my Jill file right here in my file browser. I'll bring it in. And you'll see the actual Jill. This is the Jill that's, that's being proposed to be moved into production. And uh, it's, it's relatively simple. There's a new box that's, that's being proposed to add called Market Price Los Angeles, Market Price LA. And, um, Within that brand new box, there's a job called Market Price LA001. Uh, this is all of the Jill exactly as it's proposed to go into production with one exception, which is that for any new job that's being proposed, uh, you can annotate the job in a comment form with an average duration. And in this case, uh, it's anticipated that this Market Price LA job will run for 15 minutes. So in order for us to simulate what these changes, how these changes are going to affect any existing SLAs, it's important to know how long these jobs are anticipated to run for. So that is up to the, the user to input the average duration. Um, it's also possible to use this average duration annotation on an existing job if the proposed changes are maybe not changing the structure, but for some reason you'll anticipate that an existing job will run shorter or longer than it currently does, uh, you can modify uh, this average duration for even for an existing job and see how the how that will affect the simulation. So now we've got a new box uh, that we're adding. 
the box has the same starting conditions as that market price Chicago box that we were looking at earlier. And we also modified the successor to that market price Chicago box. Uh, we updated that job with an update job statement, and we changed its condition to also depend upon the success of this new market price Los Angeles uh, box that we're creating. And this Jill file can have other uh, unrelated Jill changes in it as well. So the ones that we care about are the ones we just uh, reviewed. So at this point, I'll click Next on the wizard. And now I have an option to override any of the global states that exist within the scheduler. So we're going to be simulating from uh, the current state of the production jobs uh, into the future. And so if there's any jobs that are currently in a failure state, we may want to add a rule to say anything that's currently in a failure state Let's assume for purposes of this simulation that that job is um, in a successful state. Uh, if you want to override this for an individual, this global rule for an indiv individual job, you can add exceptions at the job level uh, by clicking uh, this button here. I'm not going to do that for this simulation. I'm just going to click on Finish. And when I click on Finish, it submits that, that simulation. Uh, one thing. Uh, to note is that prior to submitting the simulation, it actually does validate the Jill. So if there were any uh, syntax errors in the Jill that was um, input, or if perhaps there was a condition on a job that doesn't exist in production in that, in that simulated Jill, um, you would get a, an error message here. But all of the Jill that we were looking at was clean, so it's processing that and it's um, it's, it's running the simulation. Now, please remember that this simulation is just a simulation. No jobs were added to the underlying Autosys scheduler. We're just doing a simulation here. And it took, um, you'll see it took 31 seconds for that simulation to complete. So it, it actually completed successfully. So now we can go back to our, our thick client and take a look at how that what the effect of that simulation was. So to do that, uh, I'm going to go over to the monitoring tab. And I currently have a, um, a tab where I'm filtering, where I'm looking at my market pricing job streams. And um, you'll notice that within here, actually, that market pricing stream is currently running in production, because like I said, it runs every 30 minutes. And you can see here that it's running. This is, um, this is just the current production run. And this, this job uh, market price, uh, New York 004, is currently running, and we're on target to complete before our SLA for this currently running um, in-progress run. There's also a forecasted run, which is uh, the next forecasted run, which is going to start in just a minute or so, and that one is also forecasted to be early. So now if I go in and edit this tab and I choose to include my simulated job stream runs, and I'll choose to only show the next simulated run here, what you'll see is that a new third uh, entry appears here, which is market pricing with the purple icon and a double bar in, in this field. This is a simulation run. And now you can see that the simulated run with the changes that we're proposing is simulated to be 16% late. It's simulated to miss its SLA. So let's take a look at this simulated run. And we can take a look at it um, in comparison to this forecasted run. So I'll put them side by side so we can, we can do a, a quick comparison here. The forecasted run is based upon the job definitions as they currently are in production, and the simulated run is including the proposed changes that we're, that we're simulating. So you'll notice if I open up Market Price New York in both views, that the one on the right includes this Market Price LA box, which does not exist on the left. This is the new box that we added into the middle of this job stream that we are simulating. 
And when you open up the box, you can see here's the job that's being simulated to, to run for 15 minutes. So when I take a look at this job, the details, you'll see in the Runs tab that it has, um, it's, it's predicted to start at 2.50 and end at 3.05 which is 15 minutes later. So that was based upon the average duration that was fed into the simulation. Um, so this market price LA box is running in parallel with the market price Chicago box, but the market price Chicago box only runs for about eight minutes. So what, you'll, what you're seeing here is that by inserting this box into the middle of the stream and running it in parallel with market price Chicago, we're actually increasing the duration of the job stream by, by this seven minute um, delta. And that's enough, that seven minutes is enough to push this over its SLA. So we are now, we're now telling you that if you make those proposed changes, you are going to miss your SLA by the amount of time that you see right here. It's predicted to end at 313 and the SLA is, at 307. So it's about a six minute breach of your SLA with the changes that you've proposed. So this, you know, simulation um, gives you the opportunity to see what the effect is because it's not really necessarily that obvious. You're adding a job in the middle uh, that's going to run for 15 minutes, yet it didn't have a 15 minute impact on the SLA. It only had a seven minute impact because there's other things to consider, things that are running in parallel with it, et cetera. So this is uh, just giving you an example of how the simulation works and how you can validate um, changes against your SLAs prior to moving them into production.